Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Nihilumbra. Uh, this is a weird one, but let's just go have a quick look at everything first. So, you've got a bunch of settings here. The sound, the music I should say, is much, much too loud normally. I would recommend putting it down to this pretty much immediately because it blocks out the narration and it blocks out pretty much everything really. I'm not going to go into the art gallery and the challenges, because these are pretty obvious. The art gallery is just a bunch of concept art and pictures and stuff like that that unlocks throughout the game. And the challenges are just what you need to do to get your trophies, trophies and stuff like that, right? Unfortunately, this game's loading times are horrendous. We are talking like 15 to 20 seconds to swap between a menu or to load a level or to quit a level. For a 2D game like this, that seems relatively unnecessary to have such long load times. Even in the bloody menus, where it takes anywhere between 20 and 20 seconds just to get to a different menu from the from a menu you're on. It's weird. It takes so long, and I have no idea why. But anyway. So, this game's got two modes. It's got story mode, and it's got void mode. Now, I'm not going to show off any of the story mode levels, because they are honestly boring as sin. There's a reason for this. The story mode is basically an extended tutorial that goes for about two bloody hours. And these two bloody hours are spent using the using the powers that you have in the most mundane ways possible, while a voice is while a disembodied voice is trying to tell you something about the worlds that doesn't really show in the actual world. There's this disembodied voice, as I said, that tries to make you feel sorry for these worlds as they're being eaten by this thing called the void. And the only thing it shows is these worlds being eaten by the void, but it's hard to actually care about these worlds being eaten because there's nothing really that unique or interesting about them. It's just a forest, some mountains, a volcano, a desert, and a city with no one in it. And it's just a bunch of monsters being eaten up by the void, so it's like, why should I care? It tends to do the sort of tell-don't-show instead of show-don't-tell. Telling and not showing is a really bad way to make me care about something. But anyway, once you've finished all the levels, gotten all the powers, and basically have a basic idea of how the game works, you can swap to Void Mode. And Void Mode makes you go through all the levels again, except that the puzzles are completely different and a lot harder. So we're going to be just picking a random level and hope I don't run into something that's too hard to beat. But yeah, the... the Levels are a lot harder in Void Mode. We are talking... This is where the game really comes into its own. And having to spend anywhere between an hour and two hours in the story mode to get to this point is pretty damn unforgivable, if you have to ask me. Because I was bored... Oh, God! I was bored as goddamn sin trying to... I, I was bored as sin trying to actually get to... Oh, good Lord. I was bored as sin trying to actually get to the end of the story, thinking, oh, there might be something up. Where did that monster go? That was odd. Okay. Hmm. Actually, so there's no red here, so I can just set this guy on fire. That, that's a weird bug. I haven't actually discovered that one yet. So yeah, the idea is that you have five different colours of paints. Oh wait, I think I have to go back, don't I? That makes more sense. You have five different colours of paints. Blue is slippery, which actually lets you speed up a bit. Green lets you... Oh dear. Green lets you... Green lets you bounce, so you can jump higher, and you can also bounce off walls to get a little bit of extra momentum. You've got... What do you got? You got this orangey colour here, which lets you stick stuff to the ground. So that you can... And you can also stick to walls like this. Oh, what? It killed me? Are you serious? That's, that's gay. So yeah, orange lets you stick to walls. Red is... If you put red on the ground, it will let you... kill something. Oh. 
Red will let you kill something. I'm going to quit this level. You, you get the idea of how this is supposed to work. I'm going to quit and just keep swapping between levels because, again, this, these are some really, really hard puzzles to figure out and I don't want to spend too long in any one particular area just annoying you guys. But again, these loading screens make that a lot damn harder too. And the yellow is meant to you to activate electricity, so you use that to activate things like platforms. And it's a bit of an odd power to include at the very end. Considering everything can interact with the world around you, having just something that just interacts with electricity and gets and just activates devices after everything else can interact with the world around it is just a bit of an odd colour, but I won't argue with it too much. But anyway, so let's actually talk about the game itself. The game itself is a very simple puzzle platformer, and other than drawing the paint on the screen of the touchscreen, it's a very simple move left, move right, jump. Control scheme. The game itself, however... Yeah, I've actually played this level, so I know how half this works, so we're going to have to try and... Oh, wait, well, we can't really do that. We just have to try and make this jump here. We can't... Ow. Oh, that was a bit silly. So the game... Again, main ploy. I gotta. Um, let's just get rid of that. So the game's main idea, obviously, is to. Well, I uh, time that wrong. The game's main idea is to make you solve puzzles with creative uses of all of these. Except, it takes two hours just to get to that point, which really annoys me, as I've said before. So you end up spending a bunch of time. Really? Oh god. You end up spending a bunch of time just really annoyed at the fact that you have to go through all these boring as hell puzzles. I swear I figured this out before. Tr trying to go through all these boring as hell puzzles. Oh, damn it. Trying to go through all these boring puzzles. As the story mode progresses, I'm just going to quit here. And This is the second take of this video, and it's probably going to be the last take, because I don't know how I can make this much better. Oh, good lord. I'll go to one that I finished this time. I finished a couple of these. So I'll know I'll be able to pull it off. But yeah, the game spends a ton of time making you go through the boring puzzles. Then you get to the hard puzzles. It's like the rug's been yanked out from under you. God damn, it really is. It's like... You spend so much time being bored out of your mind and then you start getting frustrated because some of these levels are actually really, really difficult. We'll go to something that I've finished. Hopefully this will be much better. And the game really does come into its own once it gets to the harder puzzles. And the harder puzzles, unfortunately, tend to exacerbate some of the problems that the game has from the very beginning. Okay, this is an interesting puzzle. We've got to get these guys to come off the edge here. And try to not die in the process, preferably. Alright, so... Off you come. Oh, this is a bad idea. Yep. Right, so let's... Cover that in slippery stuff. And all the... All the it's, a, it's a decent idea. All the paints do have a uh, extended set of uses at least they at least have two uses each which is quite which is a good thing because it having everything have multiple uses makes everything more interesting however the games tends to have a really liberal usage of what paints can be used where and you just have to try and figure out the crazy ass solution of whatever puzzle the developers decide he wants to put in which can annoy some people at times sure that is the point of these sort of puzzle platformers, but I also have a problem with them in the sense that they tend to turn into timing and reactionary puzzles more than anything else in particular. Mainly because of just the way they work, honestly. It's just... You end up having to, to, um, ex to train your sense of timing more than you do your sense of actual puzzling, which annoys me a lot in puzzle games, and this game really takes the cake with how much it tends to make you do that. And I hate puzzle games that do that. I really do. I, I think this is how you solve this puzzle, but I can't be sure. See, I have to wait for the specific timing for it to be for me to be safe to jump down into these spikes. That's an element of timing and non actual a non-element of actual puzzling, and I hate having to do that in my puzzle games. Ow. 
and now I have to do all that again. But the game's checkpoint can be a bit of a dick. The game also tends to be relatively unpolished. It works fine most of the time. We're talking like 95%, but then you've got another 5% of the time where the game just acts really weirdly, or a tiny piece of paint makes the game think that it's acting absolutely strangely, or you've got things like the bug that I've actually included in my video, just in, in a video that I made earlier, just down below. I, I've left a link in the description for you. And it's just... Yeah, I keep forgetting about that. It scares the fuck out of me every time. There we go. And it can be really annoying the 5% of the time where the game decides it really wants to break. And it annoys the crap out of me when it does. The 95% of the time where it decides it doesn't want to break, it's actually fairly enjoyable. I'll give it that. It is satisfying to figure out how the developer is crazy enough to make you want to... To, have, to figure out the developer's crazy streak and how exactly they want you to use all the paints. And it is enjoyable, I'll give it that, but... Too much relies on timing and actual platforming skill. And I do not like that. I do not like, like that one bit. There's this one huge, like, chase scene at the very end of the story mode which absolutely exacerbates this because the magnets and the electricity act in really freaking weird ways. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that the game is surprisingly imprecise in the areas where you wouldn't want it to be. And that's my main problem with it. The bugs and tiny little bits of paint that can end up absolutely wrecking the way the game works. These are all things that can make the game feel imprecise. And for a puzzle platformer where the idea is you need to be precise, it can really take the wind out of the sails on that one, I just have to say. We'll go play one more level. Hopefully I can find one that I finished in the later levels. And then we can call it. It is satisfying to finish the level, but when you get roadblocked by something along the lines of a something along the lines of a bug or just one little piece of pain that you placed out of place and then you have to do a whole big segment over again because the checkpointing is cruel then that can feel a bit unfair i just have to say that it's not that bad though i like the idea of the multiple paints and having to put them all together into some sort of rube goldberg solution where you have to use every single paint in order to get something done but you have to spend two hours getting to that point, and you might be bored of sin before that. Right, so it looks like we have to use the magnet here. This is how electricity works. So I can't actually... Okay, so the so I can actually show off an example here. So we use the electricity to make a bounce pad. We cut off the electricity at the right time, and we can use that to... Well, we can almost use that to bounce up there. Almost. Not quite. And we can't use the orange one here, which lets us stick to walls, so we have to... Right, wrong paint, wrong paint. All the paints work interestingly, interestingly, except for electricity. And it is enjoyable to figure bunch, a bunch of this crap out. There we go. But as you can see, it tends to rely on reflexes a lot, which some people might hate. I know I certainly do. Okay, so what have we got here? We can't use blue and we can't use red. So we have to use sticking to walls and bouncing and all that. Like, this is an example that the game wants to teach you right off the bat, which I actually quite like. Using the ability to stick to walls, you can jump pretty much as high as you like. No wall is unmountable, as the game says, and it's quite a neat little trick, but... Oh, it killed me. God damn it. And I'm back here. Wonderful. As I said, the checkpointing can be really annoying. You do have, you do have like, manual checkpoints. So that can be... That can be a bit of a pain for some people, including myself. 
missed it. Oh, I'll put some more green down here so I can't, so I can't miss this time. That's how you do it. I'm pretty sure I've said everything that I've wanted to say at this point. The game could definitely use less of a focus on reflex-based puzzles and not and have more of a focus on the actual puzzle puzzles and not just reflex-based puzzles. It could definitely use a bit more polish to try and reduce how often bugs are made, um, to reduce the amount of bugs. But I will stick this here. Can I jump over the top? No, I can't. Even though he's, he was clearly bumping into the goddamn wall, I can't jump over him there. God damn it. Let's go play another level. It could definitely use a bit more polish. It could definitely use a bit less reflex-based puzzles. It is enjoyable. And it does, it does make you feel... It does feel good to get puzzles done. To get really, really hard puzzles done. But at the same time, I just wish it wasn't as, ma as a massive pain in the ass to get to this point. Maybe if you had an option to unlock the void mode as soon as you started. But then again, then he wouldn't have an excuse to use the bloody two... The bloody two hour long tutorial just to get to this point, but... I can't really blame him for wanting to have a story mode, but the story mode itself just isn't that great and it made me bored as hell. Let's hope I can actually get this level done without feeling like an absolute idiot in the process. Oh yeah, so I remember this level. Running. Jump over him. We'll let him get to the bottom. We'll jump over. So yeah, this is mainly a reflex puzzle. You can use things like the bounce in order to get over them, but it's easier just to do it like that. Now we have this guy to get past, so... Alright, if I remember correctly, I have to use the bounce stuff here. That flower will kill me if I walk over it, so I better not do that. It's an alright game. If it was a lot more polished and had a lot less reflex puzzles, I'd definitely recommend it a lot more. This... But with the game the way it is right now, I can't really... Collision Mask. With the game it is right now, I can't recommend it to everybody because I can imagine a lot of people who aren't exactly acquainted with puzzle platformers getting really frustrated with the way some of the game's mechanics work. I don't have a problem with saying if you like puzzle platformers, getting this might be a good way to actually, um... Might be a good... If you like puzzle platformers, you probably will enjoy this. Despite its bugs. But for those of you looking for a puzzle platformer that isn't a massive pain in the ass at points, this is probably not going to be it. Oh great, this puzzle. But now I remember what I have to do here. I have to set up bounce on these surfaces. I bounce on this one, that lets me bounce on this one, and I should... Yep, I cleared it. And that was the end of the puzzle. That was the end of the level. Okay, never mind. Usually that is a sign saying that the level ends there, but whatever. That was me actually completing a level and proving I'm not completely stupid. Hooray! But yeah, anyway, final thoughts on New Halumbra. I mean, like, I'll, I'll talk about the presentation. It's okay. It does its job. It, it's a little bit annoying. That some really small specks of paint can end up causing you some massive issues. But then again, that could be blamed on as much player error as it does game design error. Because sometimes you can leave just tiny specks on a wall and it'll end up just, like, doing it, doing it like the entire wall's covered in it. And that can be annoying. And then again, that just... That just goes into polishing bugs more than anything else. It would, I wish it would be a little bit easier not to put random specks of paint in random places, but then again, that's probably just me being an idiot. Anyway, final thoughts on the Hilumbra. Interesting concept, it's fun to play around with the paints, and it is satisfying to finish the levels, but sometimes the levels can rely a bit too much on reflexes, and the game is a little bit unpolished with some of the bugs that can happen, and, you know... Doing stuff like being able to put paint, tiny specks of paint that actually act like the whole wall is covered in that paint can, hap can happen sometimes, it can frustrate you. If you're easily frustrated or if you don't like puzzle platformers, this is definitely not the game for you. Also, be warned that you do have to sit through the two-hour tutorial mode in order to actually get anywhere even remotely interesting with this game. But you will get a few hours out of it. I think if this is going to be about 10 bucks, I think it's said in the email, but I can't imagine it being more than 10 bucks. 
I would not recommend this to anyone outside of just puzzle platformer fans in general, because I am easily frustrated and uh, this game has frustrated me a few times. Especially with the final level where it's just a run through an electronic gauntlet and you have to spend a ton of goddamn time just figuring out how, to, how, to, how the bloody magnets work in order to just get to get to the end. And I mean that in a negative way and you'll understand if you buy this and play through to the end of that. But yeah, Nihil Umbra, wouldn't recommend off the top of my head, but your puzzle platformer fans and people who like really in tough puzzles will probably like it. Just be prepared to be a little bit frustrated at the way some of the game works. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.